Underoos! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight I'm going to take a look at the SH Figure Arts Captain America Civil War Iron Man Mark 46. Now, after getting Captain America last month, it being my first Marvel Figure Arts, I got super excited because I love that figure. So, Iron Man coming out this month, I was excited to get him just to have uh, something to pair up with Captain America. Plus, I've heard people rave about the Figure Arts Iron Man's, the standard Figure Arts packaging. There's some stuff hidden back behind the graphic, uh, like usual, but... Uh, that's why you open the package. You can see Iron Man. I'm liking the candy red and the gold color to it. Uh, mm, excited. Pretty picture on the side. On the back, you have movable molding option parts. Uh, the usual, hey, here's what's in the package. Down here, I don't know exactly what it says. It probably says something like, it's about damn time you got an Iron Man. Same thing on the bottom. Bunch of unreadables. So I'm going to get this open and see how he compares to Captain America. Okay, getting it open, it's a, uh, it's a plastic tray. It has all the pieces in it. It has a tray on top holding everything in there. And there's a piece of paper here taped to it. Again, I don't know what that says, but based on the picture, I'm guessing it says something like, you get funky with this, it's going to rub the paint off the shoulders. And I figure that's true with any part that's going to rub against another part. And yeah, I just pulled out the instructions. It's the same thing. Warning, may rub off. It's going around the uh, hip area. It shows the leg shifting down, and I guess if you rub against the crotch, it's going to take some paint off. But it shows all the interchangeable hands, uh, pop them off the peg, put them on the peg, which parts go in the palms, and then two for the feet. And there you go, out of the package. And I have to admit, I am a little bit nervous about messing around with this figure. The instructions really kind of freak me out, so messing around with him, I am a little bit leery, a little bit careful. But then again, it hasn't really stopped me from putting him in a lot of poses. Other than that, beautiful paint job. Uh, everything's right where it should be. The reds are so deep. Andy, I almost want to lick them. It looks delicious. The proportions, for the most part, I like on this figure. Uh, it's bulky. It's beefy. The only thing that really sticks out at me is the size of the head. I feel like it's kind of small. So since I'm talking about that, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. A comparison with the figure arts Captain America from Civil War. I like the sizes. His shoulders are a little bit higher. He's a man in a suit. But as you can see, the head size, it looks a little small, doesn't it? It's either skin tight or it there's nothing in there. But I'm not going to harp on that too long because once you get into action poses, that all goes away. It's when you have them like this that it really jumps out at you. Getting to the articulation, the neck is on a dumbbell joint. Uh, it's ball at the bottom and the top at the top of the neck, between the head and the neck. So you can get up pretty good. You can get some side to side. Now there's also a ball joint down at the bottom of the neck. So all of that combined, you get a really nice range of movement. The shoulders are kind of crazy. It's inside. I'm in fact, I'm not even sure what's in there. It's it's a pin going into a ball joint, but it shifts in and out somehow. I think it comes out of here, but you can shift it out to get a lot more range of movement. You can get forward. You can get back. You can't get up a lot because of the shoulder pad. It rotates around. The shoulder pad itself is on a hinge. If you get it into position, you can hinge up, move the arm around, and that's actually on the disc for the shoulder joint so it doesn't move whenever you move this have a bicep swivel have a double elbow comes up to about right there then we get down to the hand I've never had a figure art figure that didn't have the same wrist joints kind of the ball at the top and the bottom with a hinge but on this it is just a ball sticking out of the bottom of the forearm now that ball does give you a little bit of range of movement but not near what usual joints are but it does swivel and the extra hands kind of take care of what you need articulation wise also on these hands i didn't notice it in the movie but i did go back and look the hands have this big guard on the back of it which even if you had a hinge there you probably wouldn't be able to hinge this back without that getting in the way the torso is a ball up into the chest and then down into the crotch so you can crunch forward pretty good you can arc back side side and that gives a pretty good range of movement the hips are on a ball uh, with a swing down joint so you can swing this down and then bring it forward to about right there and back and out 
and then it just shifts right back up into there. Double knee, it does get a pretty good range of motion. I also like that when you bend the knee joint, it doesn't really break until you get really, really far. From right about here, you still have a clean line. And then the feet. Mm. You have a hinge. It doesn't go back that far. It goes to about right there. There is some kind of guard that's going over the foot. It does swing up, and you can get a little bit more, but not much. There is a rocker, but it, that doesn't give you much at all either. It gets about right there and about right there. Moving on down to the toe joint, you got to shift this up a little bit and then bend the toe, but... It gets about right there. Not a lot at all. Now for accessories, he comes with two fists. Like I always say, I like the fists. They're made for punching. He comes with two splayed out hands, kind of at ease, kind of his underoos call. He comes with two karate chop hands. I'm not quite sure what those are for. Uh, flying poses, maybe. They look cool, but I don't see a lot of use for them. And then he has splayed out hands that have pegs on the palm of them for the effects to attach to. And then as far as effects go, for the hands, he comes with two short ones that uh, simulate flying, or well, stabilization, I guess. He comes with two longer ones for repulsor blast. And then for the feet, he comes with two larger flight effects. Now, thankfully, because I'm nervous about the paint, the hands are fairly easy to switch out. They just kind of pop off. And all of them pop on pretty easy. Now, for the effect hand, the hole in it does go back. It doesn't go up into the hand, it goes into the back of it to simulate that, you know, him blasting. But it goes on there pretty good. And then the effect just goes on the peg. And for the feet, the peg is on the effect. So really, you can't mix and match them. But it goes in here. And here he is with the Marvel Legends Mark 46. <laughs> Huge size difference here. Obviously, the figure arts is not going to be a replacement for the Iron Man in your Legends display. It's just too small. But for a figure arts display, this is beautiful. I mean, look at the difference in the paint jobs. Of course, there's a difference in the price, too. You just get what you pay for. So at the end of the day, I really dig this figure. Again, figure arts just wins me over. Figure arts is definitely getting its own uh, shelf space in my room. The colors on this, fantastic. The articulation, at least from the knees up, is great. There's a little bit of nervousness there. Uh, you don't want to mess up the Iron Man paint job. But if you do, it's a later at the airport battle Iron Man. Iron Man in the movies never stays clean for long. So if the figure doesn't stay clean for long, that's like a hidden action feature. Yes, I have a quibble about the head size, but I have a quibble about head sizes on most figures. At least when you're doing a group of figures. By themselves, I barely notice, but when you try to match them up, if the head size doesn't match, it just throws me off. If there was any other negative I could think of for this figure, it would be the lack of more accessories. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy with eight hands and six effects. Maybe opening flaps? or an extra head. I understand that they're selling the Tony Stark. I got that on pre-order, definitely. But a Tony Stark head here included with this Iron Man would have been icing on the cake. Yes, extra parts would have been cool, but really, when it comes down to it, not absolutely necessary in the grand scheme of things. But man, I would like to see these come out faster because with the face printing technology, I need a Bucky. I need a Winter Soldier. One that scales in with these two guys. If we could just finish the final battle, I would be good. I mean, I could have that as a display. What I'm trying to say is, this figure's cool. I want more. That's what it breaks down to, basically. I could have probably saved two or three minutes of video time here just saying that. So, if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the foosh. And you know what? I kind of love this figure. Yes, it is a little bit fiddly, which we'll get to in a minute, but overall, I feel like this is, like I say about a bunch of the figure arts, a shrunk down version of the character.